Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to He Walks With Us Everywhere. I'm Tracy, and it is the 29th of December in the year of our Lord, 2023. We'll continue our daily word of encouragement, our daily reading with the Puritans. And this morning's reading is coming out of Psalm 73 and verse 25. And the word of the Lord says this, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. And today's message is entitled, heaven. From the Mount of Meditation, as from Mount Nebo, we may take a view and prospect of the land of promise. Christ has given possession of heaven in the name of all believers. Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. Hebrews 6.20 Heaven must needs be a glorious city, which has God both for its builder and inhabitant. Heaven is the extract and quintessence, and quintessence means the most perfect or typical example of a quality or class. So heaven is the extract and quintessence of all blessedness. There the saints shall have all their holy hearts can desire. Augustine wished that he might have seen three things before he died, Rome in its glory, Paul in the pulpit, and Christ in the flesh. But the saints shall see a better sight. They shall see not Rome, but heaven in its glory. They shall see Paul, not in the pulpit, but on the throne, and shall sit with him. They shall see Christ's flesh, not veiled over with infirmities and disgraces, but in its spiritual embroidery, not a crucified, but a glorified body. They shall behold the king in his beauty. Isaiah 33, 17. What a glorious place will this be? In heaven, God will be all in all. 1 Corinthians 15, 28. Beauty to the eye, music to the ears, joy to the heart. And this he will be to the poorest saint as well as the richest. O Christian, who are now at your hard labor, perhaps following the plow, you shall sit on the throne of glory. Revelation 3, 21. Meditate often on the Jerusalem above. Amen. Meditate often on the Jerusalem above. I love how he says all that he says here. He tells us that we're going to see Paul on the throne and we're going to sit with him in glory. We're going to see Christ's flesh that spiritual embroidery, I like that a lot. Not crucified, but glorified body. That's what we will see. What a glorious place it'll be. God will be all in all. He will be beauty to the eye, music to the ears, joy to the heart. And this he will be to the poorest saint, as well as the richest. And I say that let it be so even now, that Christ our Lord, God our Father, is beauty to the eye, that our Father is even now here on earth. He is beauty to the eye, music to our ears, and joy to our hearts. And He is the God of the wealthy and the God of the poor. The richness and abundance of our God is worth far more than any temporal thing. It's worth more, of more value than any silver or gold. Following the Lord Most High and obeying Him and walking after His statutes, walking after his commandments is the highest calling on all of our lives. There is nothing grander. There's nothing greater. Serving God is what it's all about. So today we have a choice. We can serve God or we can serve man. We can do all that we do as unto the Lord and in that glorify him, give him glory, give him honor, and give him praise for everything good, for every work that we do for words that we speak, let it be to glorify our Father in heaven. Or we can serve ourselves, serve flesh, serve man. This carnal, fleeting vapor of dust, right? Let's serve those things which are eternal today. Let's serve him in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. There is no greater reward. There is no greater calling. There is no greater honor than serving the Most High God. And it's not to make ourselves look good. It's not to 
move ourselves along or make ourselves look better than what we are or give ourselves out of boys and out of girls. This is glorifying our Father in heaven. He gets the glory. He brings the increase. Let all we do today be as unto the Lord. Everything, every bit of our walk, let it glorify him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Abba, I just want to thank you for a new day. Thank you for the ability to come before you and to praise your name. Lord, we ask this day that you help us to walk this out in spirit and in truth, that indeed everything that we do, we do it as working working unto you, that we really exemplify Christ in this world, that we are your hands and feet, that when people look at us, they see you in us, that through our words and through our actions, people will indeed glorify you, Lord, by the way we treat others, the love that we have towards others. People will indeed know that we are your disciples. Jesus tells us that they will know that you are mine by the way that you love. Help us to love one another with a genuineness of heart, with a desire to speak forth the truth in all things, with a desire to spread the gospel of the kingdom, with a desire to shine light in the darkness. Lord, help us to do your will all the days of our lives. Help us to always desire obedience to you above any pursuits of the flesh. Let us truly lay down our own lives for your sake. Let us lay down our own desires and our own wants for what matters most. And you indeed matter most, Lord. I thank you for this day. I thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ who truly love you and who are truly walking this out in spirit and in truth with a desire to serve you, to humble themselves before you and to to crucify their flesh and to really follow you in humble obedience. And Lord, when I say obedience, I'm talking about doing what makes you happy. I'm talking about hating what you hate and loving what you love. And the only way to do that is for us to be fully and wholly surrendered unto you. And again, Lord, it's not legalism. It's not because you force our hand or because, well, this is the letter of the law. It's because we love you. I serve you, Father, because I love you. And the only way I know how to love you is by the love you have for me. And we thank you this day, Father. Thank you for loving us, even when we're unlovable. Thank you for holding out your hand and welcoming us home, even when we've gone astray. Thank you for receiving us into your kingdom, into your flock, even when we've wandered away. Thank you for never turning your back on us, though there have been times that we have turned our backs upon you. You are so merciful. Your your heart truly is that none should perish. That's your heart. And sometimes you allow us to make those wrong choices and those left turns when we should have stayed the straight road. And sometimes you let us make ridiculous decisions, Lord, that are just straight up foolishness so that we could then learn by such errors how to stay off those wonky roads in the future. You teach us, Lord, through every trial, through every struggle. You show us your goodness. You teach us how to be more Christ-like. You teach us spiritual things with each and every decision we make, Lord. Help us to look for those lessons. Help us to see what you're showing forth through all those difficult things we walk through. Lord, perhaps We're facing physical ailments or physical struggles or loss of the ability to do things in our physical selves. Our strength is failing us, Lord. Help us to learn how to press into you and how to lean upon you for all that we have need of. Lord, we ask that you would break down every barrier that stands in between you and us. This day, break down every stronghold that is trying to exalt itself in a place above the knowledge of the truth, which is you. Break down every lie and every deception, Lord. Break down every false 
way that's in us. Break down every false teacher that we've put on our radios or on our YouTubes or Spotify's. Every false way, Lord. And give us discernment, God. Help us to see the truth in all things. Forgive us this day, Lord, for making idols of anyone or anything. For putting people or things in places of importance that you have not put in such places of importance. God, forgive us. Forgive us for becoming legalistic in our walk. For making ourselves something when we truly are nothing. Forgive us for shunning other brothers and sisters in Christ who are just trying to find their way to the narrow road. Give us compassion, Lord, a genuine compassion for the body of Christ. Give us a genuine compassion for the lost, that we would want to just shine forth your praises and speak forth your words to help to pull people out of those trenches, out of those pits of misery and muck and mire that they're stuck in. Lord, let us be that that hand extended out towards others. Let us be the branch that helps to pull others to safety. Give us the right words, Lord, in the times that we need them. Give us prudence and wisdom to know when no words are needed. Help us to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. Lord, help us to learn when we should say something and when we should keep silent. It's like Ecclesiastes tells us, for everything there is a season to speak and there's a season to be silent. There's a season to laugh. And there's a season to weep. There is a season of rejoicing and there is a season of sorrow. But in all seasons that we find ourselves in, Lord, help us to know that you're there by our side teaching us, showing us the truth guiding our every step through whatever season we're walking through. Let us never feel alone, Lord. We may feel lonely in these flesh and bone bodies. We may feel lonely in our walk sometimes, but let us know the truth of the matter, which is that we are never alone. With you, Lord, we're never alone. We can always have a smile on our face and joy in our heart to know that not only you, Lord, but a host of heavenly warring angels is with us always, fighting battles that we know nothing about, Lord. And we praise your holy name, and I give you thanks for that. Lord, I ask this day that you would go before each of us and clear the ways. Let no harm come unto us. Go and send your heavenly warring angels to do battle for us along the way, to knock off the enemy from our trail, Lord, to shut lying lips, to shut every way of deceivableness. Lord, we ask that you would protect us physically. Place a wall of fire, a hedge of protection around each one of us this day. Let nothing penetrate that wall of defense, Lord, that you've given us. Strengthen our faith. Increase our armor, that it is stronger than any titanium on earth, Lord, that there would be nothing able to penetrate the armor that you've given us to put on. Help us to take that helmet of salvation and to wear it boldly, to put on that breastplate of righteousness, Lord, which can only be put in place by your hand over our front side and back side, shielding our hearts. Righteousness will guard our hearts, Lord. We ask for the flame upon those swords of the Spirit, which is the very word of God, which divides bone and marrow, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your very word is the most magnificent sword of all, Lord. Lord, we ask for you to increase that faith so our shield may be dented. It may be, it may be war-torn, but it is stronger than ever, Lord, because we can look back and know that it was your hand that has done all these marvelous things in our lives. Help us to glorify you all the days of our life. We ask for our feet to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. Oh God, give us the readiness always to march forward to do your work. And Lord, let the footprints that we leave behind be ones of love and mercy and kindness and meekness and temperance and grace and above all, love. 
and charity, Lord. And Father, let that truth, which is Jesus Christ our Lord, let your word, your truth be girded about our waist, that we would walk in confidence, knowing that we walk in truth all the day long. And Lord, we just magnify your holy and precious name, and we glorify you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for our families. Thank you for my daughter. Thank you for my friends. Lord, thank you for each other, all the body of Christ, all across this earth, scattered as we are, scattered Israel. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one. I thank you for every listener here today, and I ask that you would touch them with your hand of peace. Let peace be upon them, Father, this day. And for anyone who doesn't know you, I pray that you would give conviction to their hearts, that they would seek you diligently, and that when they would search for you with all their heart, they indeed will find you. Lord, it's a promise that you've made, and I pray that this day in Jesus' name, those in the faith and those who aren't yet in the faith would be confident in knowing that you are who you say you are. You are the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is no other. You are Jesus Christ, who came in the flesh, who lived a flesh and blood life, but lived it perfectly without sin. You are sinless, Lord, and that you indeed went to that cross willingly. You went to that cross and took on every sin of the world, all of my sins, all of my shame, every bit of condemnation and judgment that belongs to me. You took that upon yourself so that I could be free, so that we could be free. And then you died, Lord. You went to Abraham's bosom, and you collected the saints of God, and you raised from the dead, Lord. You raised from the dead. You walked on this earth again. The only God, though these other little G gods and these other Jesuses that are preached are all false. We know that you are the only God and that you reign forevermore with our Father, and that you have sent your Holy Spirit to be here with us, to be our comforter, to instruct us in all things, to give us discernment, to shine light in darkness. Lord, we pray this day that that's indeed what you do through each one of our lives, that you would shine light in any dark places and reveal, reveal wisdom, Lord, to us and understanding but above all things, Lord, give us charity. I love you with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I ask these things in Jesus Christ's mighty name. We pray together and ask for you to come. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. All right, y'all. Announcements, announcements. This coming Sunday, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, I will be coming on live, Lord willing, and sharing. And we'll do our daily reading and prayer time this coming Sunday. So bring your shofars and bring your love for Jesus and come together. So I'm looking forward to that. Please pray for Zoe and I for safe travels today. Pray for divine appointments. I can't wait to see what the Lord has planned. All I know is that he's got plans that we know nothing about. We may not do a testimony Tuesday this coming Tuesday night. I've got a few that I'm working on getting recorded this coming week. Praise God. I think I've got three scheduled for this week. It's going to be busy, but all glory to God. It's going to be brilliant. And so a dear brother is going to be our next Testimony Tuesday. And I just encourage you all to check out his channel. It's uh, Neftali1981, and that's N-E-P-H-T-A-L-I, Neftali1981. He has been walking this out for the Lord since 2008, and I'm just super excited that I got to interview him, and he's going to share his testimony with us, and my hope is that we can do that on the 9th. So that's what we're looking at. Tuesday, January 9th, we'll have Brother Neftali on, uh, and lots of things in the works, so praise the Lord for all that he's doing, and I have no idea what the Lord's plans are, but I trust him. I have no idea what the future looks like, but he does. Knowing that I know that he knows <laughs> is more than enough. It's more than enough. Our God is awesome in all ways. 
and blessings absolutely follow obedience. So if the Holy Spirit is leading you to do something or to speak forth the word of truth for his glory, just know that if you're obedient, he blesses it in only ways in ways that only he can. He is faithful and true. Those are his names. Think about that. It's not just a sentiment. It's just not just a nice thing to say. Those are the names of God, faithful and true. The names of Jesus Christ, our Lord, faithful and true. And if we've got faithful and true standing and holding us, we've got nothing to fear. The Lord can do a mighty work. And what does it take? It takes a humble servant, a vessel willing to step out in faith and do as he leads us to do. I love all of you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day of rest. I will be keeping Sabbath, of course, tomorrow, but I pray that all of you have a wonderful day of rest unto the Lord. Get in his word, study to show yourself approved, read the scriptures. It's good to glean from others. It's great to have wise counsel, but there is no better teacher and no higher authority than our Lord himself and the Holy Spirit instructing us. So I'll leave you with that thought. Okay. Lord willing, I will see y'all here on Sunday, 2 p.m. Central. Love y'all.